Welcome back. So, continuation from last week's video. Um, because of poor filming and editing and whatnot, I'm kind of going to do a recap week to explain what we did. Um, so, last week, you could see we were cranking like crazy. We weren't getting anywhere. Best we were getting was a little pop. Something was wrong. We were doing something wrong. So we went back to the drawing board, back to the basics. Uh, started checking the easy things first. Dad went up to Napa and got some new spark plugs, and we tried a different brand. Uh, these are Champion W89Ds. Um, and, you know, spark plugs are like oils. Everybody likes some things and hates other things. That's neither here nor there. We just we wanted to try something else because uh, we had a s sneaking suspicion that maybe those plugs were bad or fouled or whatever. And it might not even be the plug's fault. We could have, all that turning over we did, we could have, you know, fouled them, whatever. So Dad put in a new, these new set of spark plugs, and uh, this was the result. Well, we had a bad plug. Pretty decent now. I put a new set of champion plugs in there and it fired right up. Just light a little wave, just nice. Pretty happy. Pretty happy. You can see it was running, and you know that was a huge step in the right direction. But the video probably doesn't really quite do it justice. It still wasn't running right at all. So, there again, we went back to the drawing bar and I started, you know, texting friends and calling around and trying to pick some people's brains. And uh, long story short, we came to the conclusion that I had timed my engine incorrectly. Timed my magneto to engine incorrectly. Um, so I was told to time it where the impulse snapped at top dead center, compression number one. You know, I covered that in previous videos and that's what I did. And as far as I knew, that was the right way to do it. Well, it's not, <laughs> or at least not in this circumstance or whatever, with the particular mag that I had and you know, all that kind of fun stuff. So I talked to Dave Harrington and he talked me through how to time it up a different way. He basically had me time it up to the points of the mag. And he said, ignore the impulse. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's irrelevant. I mean, it's, you still have a working impulse and everything. But to time the engine, time it up on the points. So, in a nutshell, what we did and... Um, some of this information is in the parts manual, too. Um, 26 degrees before top dead center is where you want to time the full advance, no impulse. That's where the mag has got to be timed at. So what we did, um, like when Dave explained it, he did it all on the flywheel. Um, and you could do that, too. But it's a lot... You know, it's hard to see in this clutch cover where any of the marks are or anything. Or, and all the marks on this engine, like I've previously covered, they're all on the top of the flywheel. Well, you can't see that once the engine is in the tractor. If you were doing this all with the engine out, you could do that. So, basically, you know, I had my, my timing mark on my front pulley, when I my top dead center. When I put the engine together, I made a little chisel mark on the front of my pulley. So we used that instead. Um, same concept, but instead of using the flywheel, we used the front pulley because it's easier to see. We took the fan belt off. and uh, So what we did is you get it, uh, measure your circumference of your pulley, do the math, uh, and, and split it into degrees, you know, 360 degrees. And we had to figure out where 26 degrees before top dead center is. Um, actually, it's it's that way because it's before top dead center. 
Um, so we did the math, whatever, made some marks on the pulley, put that to where it needed to be, and then took the magneto, took the cap off, put the rotor to number one, and in direction of uh, engine rotation, took the coupler until the magneto points were just starting to open for number one. And then wherever we marked that, on the coupler, on the mag and everything. And then wherever that coupler was located, we took the governor back off the engine and turned that tang to match those couplers. Uh, and then, you know, re-timed re that gear to the timing gears in the engine. So basically all we had to do is retime the governor to put the magneto in the right spot if that makes sense. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, and he actually, Dave had to run it through it a couple times with me for it to fully sink in. And do that all with the uh, Magneto in full advance as well, because you want to have it in full advance, because I guess that's where the Magneto is designed to operate. That's where the optimal spark is happening. You don't want to run your engine with your lever like up and retard or whatever. You're not getting a good hot optimal spark in that uh, location and like you said it, just because you're working with governor gear teeth you know say you might be a true half a tooth off well you might have to be you know say a little bit you might have to do your fine tuning with your points lever here uh, advanced retard lever so really full advance might be say here depending on how it all worked out uh, the best we could figure out, it kind of worked out everything good. Um, granted, this was less than a perfect setup, you know, as far as you know, we're measuring and marking. And there's a lot of places for potential error, but we did it as carefully as we could. Um, and it seemed to work because we put it all together and this was the result. Runs. Backs up. No paint. Oh, no. Let's 
Deb, give her a whirl.
shut the gas off, whatever, almost three minutes ago. Thing runs a long time on empty. Uh, so I had it out playing around with it this evening before the rain hit. Uh, we we'll were waiting all day to play with it and then the weather doesn't cooperate. Uh, started up good. I let her warm up a little bit and I put a little bit of, uh, oh, what's the name of it? Radiator stop leak. Bars stop leak. Because we had a uh, little bit of a leak when we shut her down last night down in this corner somewhere. Uh, it's been dry now when it's running, so we'll see if cross your fingers that maybe that did the trick uh, but it didn't start leaking last night either until we shut it off and it started to cool off I suppose the crack or whatever's in there opened up a little bit uh, but over the course of a couple of days it dripped you know maybe a couple inches worth into the five gallon pail so I mean it was a leak but not a you know terrible terrible leak but a <laughs> leak regardless um, yeah, it was fun. Driving around a little bit this evening. Wearing the paint off the wheels, all my hard work. Getting my wheels all nice and shiny, and they're all chipped up now. Gotta get the road bands done yet for the front ones. Drive wheels. Yeah, I think I'll hang around a little bit here and see if the radiator dribbles at all, and then I'll probably call it a night. And See you guys maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, pretty exciting, huh? It runs. It runs pretty good, too. So I had it out there again last night, like you just seen. Um, so I'm out here now again. It's Friday. The uh, radiator appears to be dry. There was no drips on the floor or in the pail. So that's a promising sign. Uh, I didn't fire it up tonight. Maybe tomorrow we'll come out and do that. I did retorque all the head bolts or nuts tonight 50 pounds and they did move they all did move a little bit which you typically have when you do a fresh engine like that new head gasket um, so we should be good there um, I snugged up a few bolts down here we got a few little bit of a oil leak looks like on the back of the pan which is a little frustrating I'm not sure it might be just coming out the, around the bolts. I can't really tell. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But, like everybody keeps telling me, these things, you know, probably dripped when they were new. So, you know, they're going to they're gonna drip a little bit of oil. They, the final drives dribble a little bit. The felt seals aren't perfect, which eh, I guess that's kind of to be expected. At least we know there's getting lube out there. And I got a little bit of a something back here by the transmission somewhere. I want to say it's coming out of like this bolt up in here. I'll have to look at that one of these days. But overall, pretty good considering. Um, so this evening, I did a little washer shimming to take up some of the slop and some of these controls. You know, they were flopping around and messing up my nice paint. Uh, and it helped tighten up these hand levers a little bit too we got to still rework all these but you know just for now just to kind of band-aid fix it while we keep running it around and working the bugs out of the system so to speak uh, i don't know if i ever did show the new seat casting that norm had made up for us um so that turned out really nice just like the original, because we used uh, Mark Peterson's original casting as a pattern. Uh, we made a, several of these, too, because just about everybody's that I talked to, actually everybody except Mark, had a uh, homemade deal instead of the original one. So that's pretty nice. Um, like I said, uh, tomorrow I'll probably come out and work on this some more. Probably should focus on road bands so I can get them to the weld shop this coming week. Um, plan is we're going to try to, you know, assuming we can keep 
getting everything fine-tuned and there's no major hiccups we plan on bringing it to the Crosby uh, tractor show this coming weekend dad's coming back out with the trailer so we can haul it there and run it around and kind of work the bugs out of the system little test run so if anybody's coming to Crosby and if you see me you know be sure to say hi uh, love to meet you put a name with the face all that kind of fun stuff but yeah, I think it's probably about it for tonight. We should get the fan shroud uh, figured out one of these days too. We'll get that on there because I imagine that would help with the cooling a little bit. Draw that air through the radiator. Um, anybody that has these, how hot does your engine run? I mean, I realize there's no water pump, whatever. It's just a thermal siphon, so it's going to get a little bit warmer. It's got to boil the water to circulate it. But, you know, you can't hold your hand... When it's you know, running, you can't hold your hand on the top of the tank, but you can on the bottom. So, I mean, it's definitely cooling and doing its thing, but I'm just curious if that's normal or, you know, how hot it should be. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so doing a few more things this afternoon. I got the hand crank cleaned up and just threw some black spray paint on there just so it isn't rusty. It looks a little bit better. I took out those two cross pins and put little pin marks on them, tightened them up. They were a little bit loose, so they're tight now. I uh, re-tightened all the manifold nuts. Uh, and then I went to go try to start it, and I was still having impulse issues with that mag that we did have on here when we were running the tractor. So instead of tearing into that, I figured I'd try swapping back to my original mag. We know the impulse works on that. We've been through that. Uh, this is the 45 degree impulse, so we haven't tried that since getting the tractor running. We were running, you know, that's a 30 degree impulse for that one. So I think I've got everything back together. Well, so to back up, to do that, I had to retime it again, because for whatever reason, I thought at that point all the mags would be the same as far as timing it to the tractor. It's just the impulse would be different, but it wasn't. I had to re-time the governor to the engine again, which meant taking the governor off, cleaning up the surfaces, making a new gasket this time around because I couldn't save it a second time, resealing it up, putting it back in, timing it back up to the mag, so everything should be timed to that 26 degrees before top dead center again. Um, got my gas all back together. I think we're good to try again here now. So, oh, this is a lot of work, but uh, I think we're gaining on it. If this works, we should be good. But at this point, I ain't making any promises. <laughs>